So thank you to the several viewers that have requested some updates on my bamboo varieties. So as you can see here, I've been growing bamboo for 10 years now in Southern California. These five varieties here, there's six different clumps, but uh, two are the same. But these five varieties here are really doing well and I like them a lot. So what you'll see, what you see here is uh, some varieties of black bamboo, Philostachys niagara, Dendroclomus, uh, Asper hatam, which is black asper bamboo. The tallest in the middle is Vivax, Philostachys vivax, Chinese timber bamboo. We also have uh, Dendroclomus giganteus. So let's go get a better look up close of these plants. All right, Philostachys vivax, probably my favorite, one of my favorite in the yard. You can see why. Now, if you're wondering what those trellises are, they are for dragon fruit. I've given these bamboo varieties a job now, which is to take care of my dragon fruit. So this is reaching about 30 feet by now. And what I like about them is this time of year especially. And the reason why is because you'll see there's some variability. There are new shoots that are going to be a light green. These are all new shoots for this season in the past month or so, maybe two months. They've shot up and you'll see that they'll age as the canes get older. They're going to yellow and it's starting to get really large after about 10 years. Again, it's in a drier part of the yard you can see. And I, honestly, I irrigate it with, um, with drip irrigation. So, Bamboo is amazing, this, especially this variety. You can see it just thrives in the yard. And I carved, carved out some different spots to place my dragon fruit. So Philostachys vivax, wonderful, wonderful variety. Now this stunning variety is Dendrocolamus giganteus, or dragon bamboo. Now, I've learned over the years from people watching our videos that this is it's debatable if this is the world's tallest bamboo, but it's up there. I think there's one that's similar. I can't remember it offhand, but it gets slightly larger. Now, the problem in Southern California with this variety is that it is a wider leaf and it will fold up when it gets really, really hot. So I really regret planting it on this side of the Vivax. If I would have planted it on the shade side of the Vivax, I think it would be twice as big. So live and learn. And slowly I planted some trees around and hopefully that once this grows in a less sunlight, I think it's going to get even bigger. Now I did, you can see some of the new growth here. It's amazing. On this, I love the color of the Dendroclomus. I mean, look, it's almost black. Not as black as what I'm about to show you. Um, but the new columns are very, very healthy and beautiful. I love the coloring. You can see I tried to air layer here, but the frost damaged this new shoot. So my air layer, layer failed there. I'm just gonna leave it a bit, see what happens. So I really love the color of the new growth as it shoots, and this time of year it gets really rapid, and it grows really rapid, I should say. Now be aware, this variety does get the bamboo mealybug. Now over here is Philostachys nigra, or black bamboo. You can see it grows really, really thick. It's a running bamboo, and it has a lot of new growth right now. So it just gets really, really large, and honestly, if you want to block something or build a natural wall, use this variety of bamboo. Again, this is Philostachys nigra, or black bamboo. And it gets, I mean, after about 10 years, it's, I'd say about 15 to 18 feet tall. Now, it does look a little bit kind of not so pretty in the heat of summer about august it kind of will drop a lot of leaves and kind of burn back i think this variety would also do better in a part sun environment and what's unique about it is the new shoots will be green as you can see here i actually have to prune these back because they went past the barrier see the barrier on the left there so this is a the most aggressive of the bamboo i would say and it is in, invasive in parts of the world but look, it's so cool. It starts out green the first year. After one season, it will be spotted. And by the second season, the canes will be black. And so this is all one variety of bamboo. And I think that's why I like it. It's, it's just so unique. So there you go. But if you live in a wet climate, beware. This thing can be really, really uh, aggressive 
and an anti -vas invasive. Dendrocolamus asper hatam, or black asper bamboo. Now definitely in my recommendation is give it less sun than I did. This gets up way too much sun and I really regret not putting my dendrochlamus, both of them, behind the vivax. I, uh, in other words, I wish I put the vivax on the sunny side and the dendrochlamus on the shady side instead of the other way around. Th these plants would easily be twice as big in my opinion. So anyways, Asperhead Tom here, our black asper bamboo, you can see it starts out green and will go to black. Now in full sun it will get kind of damaged here on the canes as you can see, which is a bummer. See that? But um, hopefully I'll get some to propagate and put it in the shade and have a prettier plant. Because it should look like this. And that's what's the best thing about Asper Hatam is that you can see it has that beautiful green stripe on the cane. It's my favorite thing about it, so the contrasting black and green. Last year when this was new and turned black and green, it was stunning. It looked amazing. All right, so Asper Hatam, give this dude less shade than I did. Lesson learned. All right, this is Alphonse Car Bamboo, or Bambusa Multiplex, Alphonse Car. Now, the bummer about this one is that the noxious mealybug loves this plant. So this thing's almost dead. This thing a few years ago was 10 to 12 feet. And now I stopped treating it with the systemic, so look at that. So I'll talk more about it later. But that thing does not do so well in Southern California. I have two of them, and the other one is not much better. I mean, it's just dying off, so I wouldn't recommend it. But in contrast, this is such an underrated bamboo. This is Shirashoma bamboo. You can look it up, it has a hard to pronounce the name. But it's definitely underrated. It does really, really well. It's a runner and it's variegated in Southern California. And look at this thing after 10 years. I can't believe more people don't grow it. So again, this is Shirashoma bamboo. I love it. I can't believe more people aren't all about it like me. It's look, it's like a wall of beauty. I really like the color. It doesn't get too tall, but it is a runner. And again, this is just on drip on a really sunny, hot side of our yard. In fact, it's windy as well. So, man, that thing is really getting big. It's even going into our gold medallion tree. Look at that. So, here, I'll give you one more look at the leaves. And find one, because it's so underrated. Look at that thing. It's stunning. Jeez, people. All right, and there was a gentleman, I believe, really wanted to see this. So here you go, here is the Buddha's belly bamboo. It's really, I haven't pruned it this year, so it's a monstrosity. As you can see, it's approaching, I don't know, 40 feet. And I usually prune it out so I can see the canes, but uh, this is what it looks like when you don't prune it out. So it gets overgrown easily. I had a gopher in here, a, a gopher snake in here the other day, and it just gets so large. Ugh, I should be careful for snakes, but there you go. Now this does get the mealy bug as well really bad. So let me see if I can find that for you. All right, I treated it with a systemic, so I don't see any mealy bugs, but that's what you want to look for is that powder. So I'll show you what I use to treat my bamboo that has the noxious mealy bug, but that's been a huge problem in Southern California. So again, look for this powder here and then right below, that's where they like to reside, kind of right up under here. So we've done an episode on them. I'll show you a link you can see here to learn how to treat them. But that's definitely something you want to be aware of in Southern California because they're here to stay and you can't get rid of them. So this is the systemic I use. I recommend it when treating bamboo mealybug. All right, now here is my other Buddha's belly bamboo. And you can see here is some mealybug action. So ready, I'll show it to you. I have to treat this plant, otherwise it will die. See it right there? So again, this is why I don't grow more varieties in Southern California, and I've moved on to dragon fruit because the mealybug. My neighbor bought an infected plant about six years ago, and I saw these Argentine ants, 
travel around spreading this like wildfire. Now luckily Vivax and some of the varieties I've shown you don't get it, but this variety does. So again, the noxious mealybug, they're horrible, and they affect my Buddha's belly bamboo. Now here's what happens when you don't give Buddha's belly bamboo much water. As you can see, some of the columns have uh, got larger bellies. So it's amazing that this plant will usually, if you give it plenty of water, will shoot regular growth, but if you stress it out, you'll get this stunning growth, and that's what I like about it. Man, the only, uh, also in addition, I did want to say that when you're treating this mealybug with that baritrine shrub, it's very expensive. So be aware of the cost. And so if you have as many plants as I do, it's going to be several hundred dollars to treat them. Now I only treat the new growth because it seems the mealybugs do not bother um, the mature plant parts, parts of the plant. Mature columns, I should say. This is Mexican weeping bamboo. And it looks really sickly. If you're wondering why, it's because it's seeding. And from what I've read online is that it's gonna die. Which I'm really, really bummed about is that I've heard that this plant will die after it seeds. So if you know different, please let me know. That's what I could find out online. I've had this for eight years, I'd say, maybe more. And now it's in seed. So, oh, what it looks like when the bamboo is in seed, or at least this specific variety. There you go. And it's really sad. So hopefully, I will be able to propagate it and bring it back by collecting some of these seeds. Although I did also read that these are self-sterile. So we'll see. I'm going to give it a shot anyways. Now, <clears throat> another variety I have here is Philostachys aurora koi. What I like about this variety is it is a runner, and it stays rather petite, and it definitely needs a part sun environment. But it does grow these compressed nodes, which are have little stripes. So see how the nodes are very compressed? That's a characteristic of this variety. So I really like it. They'll start out green, and then they'll turn yellow or golden in time. All right, Philostachys aurora koi. I call it koi bamboo. Now, there is another one here, Chinese goddess bamboo. Look at this beautiful variety. And it likes to be in this part sun environment under a jacaranda tree. It's a clumping bamboo and it does really well. It does also gets the noxious mealybug. And so you can see there's some unhappy canes in there and I probably have to treat it again this year. I usually have to treat the plants once a year and I wait until they shoot the new growth because that's what the mealybugs like to attack. Now this lovely variety is painted bamboo or Bambusa vulgaris vitata, I think it's called, but I call it painted bamboo. Now it's a little bit more sensitive to heat and frost, or cold I should say, but it's been doing great in Southern California for years. So what I like about it is each part is unique, meaning there's each segment has a different stripe, kind of like fingerprints. So I really love this bamboo and gophers do as well. For some reason, this is like the gopher's favorite variety to eat in my experience so far. Also, the noxious mealybugs enjoy this variety too. But if you're looking for a really beautiful uh, bamboo in a part sun environment, this is what I suggest. It propagates really easily too. All I do is we'll find a, a piece and I'll dig it out with some roots and it will take. So it's an awesome variety. So the painted bamboo. Alright, let's see what else we can find. Now this lovely variety is Bambusa textilis or weaver's bamboo. Now a few people have commented on our video on this plant and said it's not uh, Weaver's Bamboo. However, I bought it from a rep reputable grower and I think why people don't think that this is a Weaver's Bamboo is because I grow it in full sun in the driest and windiest part of our yard. So I think it's had to adapt to and remain small to survive. So that's what I think is going on. <clears throat> 
but give me a comment if you disagree. But again, <clears throat> this was labeled from a very reputable grower, and they label it Weaver's Bamboo. Now it's finally starting to get some larger combs. We'll see. All right, let me go show you my favorite one, the best for last. Okay, so I saved the best for last in my opinion. This is Giant Timber Bamboo, or Bambusa Old Hami. So, I've had this one 10 years now, and I actually have three, but this is the largest one. So leaves are rather wide, and they will drop kind of once or twice a year. When it's really hot, it'll drop about 30%. So it can be a bit messy, as you can see. But I don't mind at all, and it is a huge clumping bamboo. Again, this is a, about 50 feet, maybe a little more. And last year I had carved a trail through here, and you can see that the trail has been just eaten up pretty much. You can't even walk through anymore. Uh, this variety does get the noxious mealy bug and scale. So you can see it had some scale on here. There's some scale damage for you. So be aware of that. And it also uh, does get that mealy bug, like I said. Now with that, I also noticed that it is producing a lot more of this powder. So hopefully that will kind of deter the mealy bugs as well. So this is definitely, I think, my favorite bamboo. I harvest it to cover my uh, dragon fruit trellises but it's definitely not good for building it's not very strong i think japanese timber bamboo is better but if you want a huge massive clumping bamboo in southern california that can survive on drippers this is what i recommend so there you go thank you for going through our varieties here most of them at least there's a few i skipped because they're not big enough and they're new so I'll show you those in the future. So here you go, giant timber bamboo. Definitely, I love this thing. It's huge, look at it, just goes. Okay, have yourself a wonderful day. Take care.